Could this DIY crankcase venting solution with a catch can be the one? It might just be, but it took some trial and error. What's up everybody? Quite a few of you have been following the saga as we've looked at crankcase venting, external breather mods, sumping, and all the various issues related to these topics. And if you wanna catch up on any of those videos that you might've missed, there'll be a link to the playlist here and down in the video description. And just a reminder for this video and all of my videos, always be sure to check the video description because in that video description, you will find links to different sections of the current video so you can jump ahead if you want to. And you'll find links to products and tools and anything related to the product project that may be pertinent. Before tackling this vacuum ported catch can modification, I was using my DIY crankcase vent along with a check valve and the OEM breather bolt configuration. In my last video related to crankcase venting, I pulled those breather bolts to check for oil and I also inspected the check valve. Everything looked good. There was a small amount of oil on the bolts as expected and there was some gunk in the check valve also as expected, but all in all, everything looked great and there were no surprises. Was that last solution adequate? Yes, I believe it was. It did a great job of venting the crank case and there was a minimal amount of oil that hit those intake bolts and ultimately ended up in the intake via the throttle body. So why even bother with this solution? Well, it vents the crankcase, it gets rid of any oily mist that may get into the intake and into the throttle body. It could supply vacuum to the crankcase and I like to tinker with this stuff. Let me pause here for just a second and say thanks so much for stopping to check out this video. My name is Ron Chenal and I like to tinker with motorcycle projects just like you and I try to share as much information as I can along the way. So be sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell and enable all notifications so you'll be alerted whenever I post new videos. Let's get back to the catch can. So let's take a look at this project and I'll show you what I learned along the way. Let me start out with a disclaimer. This is experimental. I'm just trying things out and gathering input along the way and sharing with you what I learned. So the heart of this project is a three ported catch can and two of those ports are inlets and one of those ports is an outlet. And so the idea that I'm working with here is using one of those inlets for the crankcase vent, one of those inlets for the external breather modification and using the outlet to port to a vacuum source so that I can keep the crankcase under vacuum. Once again, I wanna give a shout out to viewer JECR for throwing this idea out in the first place. He implemented this solution on his bike. He shared a lot of information about his implementation and I've shared a lot of information along the way as I've learned things and tried different things on this project. So thanks again, JECR. I really appreciate you sharing information with me and being a part of this channel and being a part of the community. So let's take a look at the catch can. It's a pretty simple setup. There's a basic oil separator in the middle and then there's also a centered filter over the outlet to make sure that no mist or any oil of any sort gets through that outlet. I'll have links to all the parts in the video description if you wanna check those out. So my first challenge was finding a place to put this thing. I have no extra space on the street bob and the only place that came to mind was the right side cover. So I popped that side cover off and took a look and would you believe that there is enough room and only enough room to fit this catch can in. It was obvious that I was gonna to have to use 90 degree fittings coming out of the catch can and that was no problem. So I did some test fitting, checked things out, everything looked like it was gonna fit okay behind that right side cover. And I took a look at how I might secure that and there is an unused mounting boss behind that side cover and the catch can lined up pretty closely to that bracket and I decided to use the bracket that came with the catch can as a template to fashion a new bracket that would reach things a little bit better. So I set up that new bracket, drilled the holes where necessary to mount it to the catch can, confirmed everything fit, went ahead and shot it with some satin black paint and did a quick brass black treatment on those 90 degree fittings just so everything would be blacked out and blend in nicely, even though you won't be able to see it. At first I tried using regular Teflon tape on these fittings, but even with multiple wraps, they were still just too loose. I decided to go with the old standby and use ultra black RTV. Once that satin black paint on the bracket dried and the RTV on the fittings fully cured, it was time to install this thing. Everything lined up nicely and I used a single bolt to attach the bracket to the mounting boss and it was nice and snug, perfect fit. I then reinstalled the grub screws to block off the ports on the intake that would have gone to the OEM breather bolts, rerouted the crankcase and external breather vent hoses, but I didn't fully seat them onto the bars because I knew I wanted to do a bit of testing and checking before I finalized everything. And for the first attempt at this project, I used that capped off vacuum nipple on the throttle body as the source for vacuum. Let me point out a couple of things. First of all, I guess it's okay to use this port. That's just a guess. You could also use something like the breather tubes that are on a lot of the standard intakes that draw vacuum from the intake flow as it goes into the throttle body. Or you could 
potentially tap into the intake tube on an intake such as the Arlen S Monster Sucker that I'm using. Then it was time for the moment of truth. She fired right up and I immediately wanted to check the inlet ports to see if indeed it was going to pull a vacuum on the catch can and therefore pull a vacuum on the crankcase. And as you can see with this vacuum gauge, there's quite a vacuum on the crankcase about nine inches worth. So here's the first snag. It is possible to have too much vacuum on the crankcase. And the last thing I wanna do is fix one problem and introduce another one along the way. Too much vacuum can cause leaks and lead to other problems. Just going with my gut, but I just felt like that was too much vacuum in the crankcase. Back to the drawing board. As I alluded to earlier, I decided to drill and tap the intake tube on the Arlen Ness Monster Sucker to see if that would produce any measurable vacuum on the catch can. Fortunately, that metal is nice and thick, so I tapped it just deep enough so that that fitting would be flush with the inside or just recessed ever so slightly. And I put a straight fitting on there just for initial testing to see how it would go. And let me just point out, if you decide to go this route with your solution, I advise that you drill and tap the intake tube on the side that's closest to the engine rather than on the bottom like I did. That way, if you have any water that gets in that intake when you're out riding in the rain, you don't have to worry about that getting down into that vent line. Everything will be just fine. And as we know from the last video I posted about the rain sock, Rain in the intake is definitely an issue with these exposed filter intakes. Then I fired it up again to see how this did. So here's the second snag. That solution doesn't produce a measurable vacuum at the catch can, but it still is a viable solution because it's at least as good as venting to atmosphere because it does allow all the pressure to escape. It does get rid of any of the oil that would go into the intake. And if there's any chance that there's a vacuum that gets generated with higher engine speeds and airflow, it would take advantage of that vacuum. But yet again, I went back to the drawing board. I was thinking about how I might solve this problem and I took a look at the vacuum gauge and I noticed that damper valve that's on it. And that's used to stabilize the needle to avoid fluctuation so you can get a good reading. And I thought something like that would be great to restrict the amount of vacuum that comes off of that throttle body port and have a little bit better control. So I did a bit of research and I couldn't really find a damper valve that would fit the need in this case. But what I did come across and decided to try is this little miniature petcock used for small displacement engine. It has 3 16th inch fittings on it. So I thought that's worth a try. Let's see how that does. Before I installed this and used it in the project, I decided to make a couple of modifications. The first thing I did was to drill out the pin that held the handle in so I could remove that. And that left a nice slot so that I could just use a flat bladed screwdriver for making adjustments. And I also cut off the ends of those barbs because I didn't really need them that long. And it'll make it a little bit easier to deal with once I do the installation. So I went ahead and installed the petcock or the damper, whatever you want to call it. And I decided to also put a T-fitting in the line. That way it'd be easy for me to put a vacuum gauge on it from time to time just to see how it's doing and make adjustments and kind of check things out. I started by completely blocking off the vacuum so that there was no vacuum supplied. So it was time to fire it up again and see what happens. I got pretty good control over the amount of vacuum that was going to the catch can, so I was pretty happy with that. And it seems like at various RPM levels that I tested, it seems to hold a relatively steady vacuum. because I wouldn't want to set the vacuum at a certain point at idle. And then when you get out on the highway, have it go excessively higher or excessively lower and maybe end up with positive crankcase pressure if there were large variations like that. So how much vacuum is acceptable in the crankcase? I wasn't able to get a solid answer on that as of the time I recorded this video. So I went with something conservative, just maybe an inch or two of vacuum at idle. just to make sure that there was something to overcome that pressure. And once I was comfortable that it was running well and that everything seemed acceptable, I decided to button everything up and get on the road to log some miles and see how it did in real world condition. It runs great. It pulls really hard all the way through the RPM range. And I had no issues whatsoever. I even road tested it with a vacuum gauge. You don't want to know how. It maintains a relatively steady vacuum within one or two inches. So I felt like that was a really 
good indicator as well that there were not any huge fluctuations in the vacuum level at various RPM levels and different engine load. What about the check valve? Well, I needed the check valve when I had the regular crankcase vent in place because that was just venting to atmosphere and there was nothing to hold a vacuum if one was to be presented in the crankcase. And this solution is basically a closed system. There's really no place that a check valve would be needed in this case, at least not that I can tell. That may change in the future or I may get some feedback from people as I go along. But at this point, I have not installed a check valve and we'll see how it does. So of the three solutions I tried with this catch can, I believe two of them are viable. The first one where I tap the intake tube and this last solution where I used the throttle body vacuum port with a damper in the line. But as I said in the beginning, this is experimental. Should I use more vacuum? Should I use less vacuum? Is it okay to use that source for the vacuum? Are there any long-term effects that I'm not aware of that could come up by using this as a solution? I really don't have the answers to these questions, but I plan to run it this way for a little while, monitor things, check the vacuum from time to time, and then see how it goes. But at some point in the future, I may switch back to the tapped intake tube solution. And periodically down the road, I will open that catch can up and see what kind of gunk is collected in it and just sort of keep an eye on things and inspect things on a normal periodic basis. What sort of crankcase venting solution are you using and how is it working? Do you have any suggestions on how I could make this project better or have I left any questions unanswered related to this catch can project? Drop in a comment and let me know. I really enjoy reading about your projects and getting feedback on my projects and it definitely benefits the community as well when you share information. And don't hesitate to let me know if you have any suggestions for future video topics. If you found this video informational or useful, please do hit the thumbs up button and share it with with your friends that really helps the channel out a lot and it shows youtube that you appreciate this content and if you're new here please do consider subscribing hitting that notification bell and enabling all notifications so you don't miss out whenever i post new videos thanks so much for watching enjoy the ride i'll see you next time the grub screws and the intake ports and looking at other options for teflon cape i cape what's a the thumbs up button. <laughs> Which one? This one? This one? This one? This one? Noisy diesel. That's a wrap.